Hi, my name is Nospel Perez. I am the laboratory supervisor for the Collier County Natural Resources Pollution Control Laboratory. We are a NELAC certified lab. We employ five chemists, two lab technicians, and one quality assurance specialist. We have been located in the Health Building Government Complex since 1992. And our mission as a laboratory is to provide legally defensible and accurate data used for a number of water quality purposes, including evaluation of long-term trends, identification of water quality problems, and the effectiveness of the county's groundwater protection program. We perform a variety of environmental tests on mostly groundwater and surface water. And some of the tests conducted in our laboratory includes nutrients analysis and the reason for analyzing environmental waters is to monitor nutrient levels over time in order to identify trends. These trends can indicate a contamination of natural waters which if found early enough could be corrected. Some of these nutrients include different types of nitrogen forms such as ammonia and nitrate nitrite or phosphorus species such as total and orthophosphorus. Now since phosphorus is the nutrient in short supply in most fresh waters, even a modest increase in phosphorus can, under the right conditions, set off a whole chain of undesirable events in a stream including accelerated plant growth, algae blooms, low dissolved oxygen, and the death of certain fish. This segmented flow analyzer shown here incorporates wet chemistry analysis using an automated approach. This technology provides a considerable advantage over doing tests manually while still providing low detection capabilities and minimal use of chemicals. Another test conducted in our laboratory includes biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD, which measures the amount of oxygen consumed by microorganisms in decomposing organic matter in environmental water. The rate of oxygen consumption in a body of water is affected by a number of variables such as temperature, pH, the presence of certain kinds of microorganisms, and the type of organic and inorganic material in the water. BOD directly affects the amount of dissolved oxygen in rivers and streams. The greater the BOD, the more rapidly oxygen is depleted in the body of water. This means less oxygen is available to higher forms of aquatic life. Another test conducted in our lab is total organic carbon. TOC measures the amount of carbon dioxide produced from organics when a water sample is atomized into a combustion chamber. These organics are derived from decaying vegetation, bacterial growth, and metabolic activities of living organisms or chemicals. This is often a non-specific indicator of water quality. Samples are typically acidified with hydrochloric acid and sparged with purified air to remove inorganic carbon. The sample is then injected into a heated reaction chamber packed with a platinum catalyst. The sample is vaporized and the organic carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. The detected amount of carbon dioxide is directly proportional to the concentration of carbonaceous material in the sample. In addition, our laboratory conducts trace metals analysis such as arsenic and copper. These analytes are analyzed on sophisticated instruments that are capable of detection as low as one part per trillion. This is equivalent to one drop of water diluted into 20 Olympic sized swimming pools or about three seconds out of every 100,000 years. In a typical application, metals are placed in solution by acid digestion. The solution is sprayed into flowing argon and passed into a torch which is inductively heated to approximately 10,000 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, almost everything is atomized and ionized, forming a plasma which provides a rich source of both excited and ionized atoms. Another test conducted within the laboratory is the microbiological analysis such as total coliforms, fecal coliforms, and enterococcus which are monitored to protect the health of the general public. Members of two bacteria groups, coliforms and fecal streptococci, are used as 
indicators of possible sewage contaminations because they are commonly found in human and animal feces. Although they are not generally harmful themselves, they indicate the possible presence of pathogenic disease-causing bacteria, viruses, and protozoans that also live in human and animal digestive systems. Sources of fecal contamination to surface waters can include wastewater treatment plants, on-site septic systems, domestic and wild animal manure, and storm runoff. Another test conducted within the laboratory is the chlorophyll analysis. Now, chlorophyll is essential to the existence of phytoplankton. Phytoplankton can be used as an indicator organism for the health of a particular body of water. Monitoring chlorophyll levels is a direct way of tracking algal growth. Surface waters that have high chlorophyll conditions are typically high in nutrients, generally phosphorus and nitrogen. These nutrients cause the algae to grow or bloom. When algae populations bloom, they deplete dissolved oxygen levels, a primary cause of most fish kills. High levels of nitrogen and phosphorus can be indicators of pollution from man-made sources such as septic system leakage or fertilizer runoff. Thus, chlorophyll measurement can be utilized as an indirect indicator of nutrient levels. The UV-Vis spectrometer shown here measures the intensity of light passing through a sample and compares it to the intensity of light before it passes through the sample. The ratio is called transmittance and is usually expressed as a percentage. So as you can see, we do a lot of the work that can't be done in the field. You see, it requires a controlled laboratory environment. Some of the equipment requires specialized space, specialized gases, and solvents. So from a health and safety standpoint alone, doing these tests in the laboratory is absolutely required. The lab is a critical piece of this essential work because Without this information, it's difficult to make an environmental decision in an informed manner. So our data is used to help identify problems and help managers develop appropriate solutions. Now these decisions can often involve millions of dollars in cleanup work and the laboratory analysis is a crucial component to be able to do just that. Now for example, we don't want to clean something up that's already clean or not do enough. So we need to know where the pollution is and what concentrations they're at, and the laboratory plays a critical role.